Welcome back to our continuing adventures on the Let's Defend platform. Today we are taking a crack at the Est Asia Loader Challenge on the Let's Defend platform. This is a VIP challenge, uh, medium difficulty. Let's see, background. In this challenge, participants will play the role of a security analyst tasked with investigating a potential malware incident involving an employee who has encountered... Ah, uh, no! <laughs> who has encountered suspicious activity. The challenge focuses on analyzing the suspected malware and identifying its behavior, potential play... potential payload, and mitigation strategies. Okay, so how many questions? Well, let's see. What is the base address of the sample? What is the entry point of the sample? SHA-256 SHA hash of the sample. Directory name that's created by the malware. URL that's encoded in the malware. Using thread.sleep. How long does the code pause execution? With the current thread in milliseconds. What is the name of the malware? What is the username of the attacker on Telegram? What is the name of the file that is deleted by the malware? And what is the name of the file that is checked by the malware or not? So 10. That's actually a, f a fairly good number. So let's go ahead and claim that we have issues right off the bat. So we can do the needful. And connect our RDP session. So we can have something a little bit bigger than what's in the web page. All right, that pops up. Hooray. So what I need is I'm going to specify the RDP. We need to bring that up, and we'll do the transition, bing, bang, boom. Okay. So we know for a fact that inside the challenge file, we will find our thing. And there's our sample, so we will do the needful. We will extract here with the industry default password of infected. There we go. So let's take a quick and easy win. We need the SHA-256 hash. So we're going to pull up hash calc. And we're going to take the sample, the extracted sample, and we're going to let it do its thing. And we should end up with a hash that starts with what? 9 Delta 1 Bravo Alpha and ends in Foxtrot 40 Foxtrot 9. So where was the hash there? So let me take that away. We will paste in what we grabbed from there. We will submit. All right. Yeah, we've started our one day streak that we're just going to continuously redo because time is extremely short. Okay, so we've been able to go through and get that at least. Uh, so let's start with the aspect. So we can use a PE file analysis tool such as Detected Easy to get the base address. And we'll probably be able to do the same for, yeah, uh, for the uh, entry point. So that, uh, yeah, die. Fire that bad boy up. Maybe. Is there a delay in execution?
No, I haven't maxed out my processor on this particular box. So I guess the question is, are, are you choking? Did my constant trying to open just give you a hemorrhage? An aneurysm, maybe? Possibly? No, it just delay. Okay, whatever. So here's detected easy. And the same thing, we're just going to drag and drop this sucker in there, and we're just going to let it do its thing. Okay, and now we need to fit... At least I didn't get too far into this without transitioning the uh, RDP session back onto the screen. So, we open up Detected Easy, we take our sample and just drag and drop into Detected Easy. Not the sample.7z, because we don't care about the 7-zip compressed file, as it is right now. And so apparently detected easy. Uh, this is not grabbing the mouse. Even though supposedly it is supposed to capture the cursor. Hmm. Okay, there you go. So it's in the upper portions here, so we'll get the base address and we'll get the entry point. So the base address is apparently 00400000. Oh, format's wrong. Does that... Can we select it in a, a different... Can we change how this is presented? Let's take the 0x and fourth. Okay. So we're taking the second. Actually, if I take the RDP window and move that closer, I could probably get the questions in without screwing anything up maybe so at least that stuff shows up so four or zero x four zero 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 and that's just by taking the base address given here and we're just converting the second zero going left to right into an x and then we will effectively do the same for the entry point. So 004 alpha alpha bravo 56 will become 0x4 alpha alpha bravo 56. And that's showing up between everything perfectly fine. Yes. And we go and submit. And did I did the, do the conversion right? Or did I screw up somewhere? Okay. Apparently I'm doing the conversion right. Hooray. So that gives us the first three of ten questions. So what is the directory name that was created by the malware? So again, we're going to have to dig into this particular aspect. So this is a, another, <clears throat> pardon me, another .NET PE file. So we should theoretically be able to go back to tools. And we're looking for IL Spy, which we got right here. And kick that off. The other aspect would be DNS Pi as well. And we'll just continue to sit here and wait for this. Okay, she's loading. She's loading. I got a lot of devices on the network right now updating, so that might be impacting available bandwidth. Okay, so this comes up, we get all this good stuff, we take our sample, we're dragging that sucker in here, it's their sample, bing, bang, boom. And we'll take this and blow this up again. And we'll just start expanding the stuff out so we can take a look at all this good stuff. 
So the suggestion was to find Bain. If we can. Form. I got a bunch of weird stuff all over the place. Still looking for that main underneath the program subtype there. Main. Some assembly references cannot be resolved automatically. This might lead to incorrect. Hmm. So it looks like we're going into application. Enable visual styles, application set compatible, text render, ring default, application run, new form one. So form one is underneath, well, form one. And then we're looking for something to be created. So I guess we're just going to go through and expand all these happy things out and let's see what we have. Material skin. There we go. Directory dot create directory. Parentheses environment dot current directory plus est Asia. So then the answer should be asked Asia. Correct. And we need to find the URL that is encoded into the malware. So again, we're going back to the main function, find a function called URL encode. As we work our way down. So is that something that's called in here? Form one mouse down, button click. Click the buttons, all the buttons. Button here, button there, button everywhere. Text changed, session log. This panel. And we got what looks to be some Cyrillic. I don't see a uh, URL encode, but then I might be looking wrong. Mouse down, text box. This rate, I'm going to need another beer. <laughs> oh, start with the main function to find. And so basically this is all stuff that then would kick over to form one, which we were just looking at. But I'm not seeing a, a URL. And I also don't see anything in here, so we're probably going to have to go dig it through all that stuff. So let's see. Any good things here? Environmental arguments. Oh, we got a message box. It looks like it says something that I have no idea what. Paste and go. What is this? Google. There isn't a great match for your search. Really? <laughs> I mean, 
imagine my shock. Um, what is it? Translate.google.com. I realize that the RDP window is in the way. Give me one moment. Okay. So let's see. Is this Russian? Yes. You have downloaded the latest version v1.3.2.1. If the cheat closes, try disabling your antivirus. Hmm. No thank you. I don't think I shall. Okay. So we're still looking for URL and code, aren't we? Yes, we are. Base capture. And this is panel up, panel down. So I guess we're digging through all this until we can actually find something that actually... Hmm. Where would you hide? Of course, it's probably not even so much hiding. It's just the fact of dealing with this confined space. And we're getting a bunch of actual messages that I suppose I could probably try to grab and decode, but we probably don't need to go even that far. Yeah, but we got nothing. This looks like an attempt to... This is underneath what? L4 F jam. This looks like this is probably like anti-analysis, like dumping it through. Yep, and there's an aspect here, ip-api.com. So likely to sit there and check. Is this a public IP? Can't we do anything with this? We're still we're still looking for that dang URL encode. I guess some read only strings. Alright, we have Okay, so it is sending the stuff out. to Telegram. And it looks like it wants like a HTTPS colon slash slash three dot something dot three slash another something So I don't know about URL and code. But if I had to guess, this here might be, we'd have to figure out what is technically at this value right now. This string equals this. So is there a, a colon? There is not a colon in this. <laughs> Okay, so then we will likely have to recreate this on the fly, assuming I'm even in the right spot. That could be a pretty big assumption. Maybe. Or I could just be an idiot and... Yeah, it's right there. It's going to go through do all the work to try to put this together. This fits a little bit better. So raw.githubusercontent.com slash new uploaders slash new uploaders slash main slash readmemd. And it is looking for a three or a two digit extension on this thing. So let's grab that and we'll copy paste 
will submit. And that is apparently the correct answer. So I guess I don't need to run through all that stuff. So let me do this. Let me transition this over. And I'll do the typical blow up to 133% as the stuff sits. So you guys can at least see where we sit with this right now. So yes. So 0x4, bunch of zeros. 0x4, alpha, alpha, bravo, 5, 6 is a confirmation. SHA-256 hash of 9 delta 1 bravo alpha ending in foxtrot 40 foxtrot 9 astasia as the the next portion the URL that was encoded is the raw github user content new uploaders new uploaders main readme.md md as it is calling out the actual URL and code function, which is right there, right before. Okay, and then we go to thread sleep. So thread sleep, which is just below this, is 2000. So is it 2000 milliseconds? Do we have to do any conversion? No, we don't have to do any conversion. So it is just strictly 2,000 milliseconds. And that's what, like two seconds? Maybe? I don't know what the conversion rate is anymore. I did at one point. Oh, I should have shooken that up a little bit before. Okay, so who wants to take a guess before I reveal it? It's two seconds. So it's basically go through, do all that stuff, and then wait two seconds. Which, okay, great. So what is it actually trying to do? It's pulling down the MD. It looks like it's then dropping out into infected.exe. What is the name of the malware? Reverse the LG4 Delta X-ray Sigma function. Which is this right here. And we're supposed to try to figure this out? Oh. Do you see it? It's there. At least I'm assuming it's there. And it was kind of given by the fact that, you know, it's what this exercise is named, the Astasia Loader. Maybe? Okay, yeah, I got it right. Honestly, I don't think I've ever heard of this one before. What else does it go by? Anyways, we'll let that grow through. Okay, and then we're looking, pardon me. I don't know if the microphone picked that up. But I'm having an adult beverage. It has been one hell of a week. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we are looking for what now? We're looking for the username of the attacker on Telegram. And if I had to take a guess, it's going to be this at S K A L A M M M V K U S N O. Because it is in there, and like anything else, yes, okay. We are using this to dissect. What is the name of the file that is deleted by the malware? Search for the delete API that is used by the malware. I think it's infected.exe. It's in the same exact function that we've been doing stuff with. Because we get file.delete, environment, get folder path, environment.special folder, dot localization, local application data, plus slash slash infected file. Or infected.exe. So let's see if I'm right or if we've got to go through and do more. 
No, oh, that's it, exactly. Okay. What is the name of the file that was checked by malware or not? So we are looking for file exists. So this is probably a check to see if the um like if it uh, the infection's already running in the background would be my guess. That would be my guess. Still nothing, and still looking. We're just basically working our way up the chain, seeing if we can find this file that exists mentioned. And then we'll have to sit there and try to puzzle out what else is there. Okay, so we're getting into that again. So we got file, write all text. And again, we are just taking this up one section at a time, looking for the hint. Boy, okay, we'll probably have to come back to that one. Watch, it's going to be inside there, because of course it would be. Because we're looking for, you know, a uh, quick and easy. Oh, never mind. So we have it here, so underneath the, the form one function. So it's right here. So it's not looking for another copy of, like, an executable. But there is if file dot exists ir environment dot current directory astasia and it's apparently looking for a current script dot text as we dissect this. So the question is Booyah <laughs> So we got it. And just under 30 minutes as well. Not bad. Not bad for a medium in a, on a VIP. I mean, uh, the, the coders and everything else like that um, make life a hell of a lot easier to go through and put this stuff together. So there we go. That has been the Astasia loader. Oh, yeah, I was going to sit there and I had a search going to try to ascertain what else. Malpedia is usually pretty good. Usually. I don't think I have ever had anything in here that's been bad. So, Astasia is a banking trojan that spreads through phishing emails that contain an executable attachment. Once the attachment is executed, Astasia downloads and installs a trojan that runs the background. The trojan can steal personal information such as passwords and credit card numbers from victims. Well, it's almost like, you know, we have a hash here. I mean, it would be a shame if we didn't just take this and dump it into virus total. Take a look and see what kind of engines detect this, right? I'd be terrible if we didn't do the needful. So this is a month old. We got 41 out of 72. Let's go ahead and reanalyze so it's something current. Okay, and the power of pausing the recording and then picking back up. We saved, I don't know, 60 seconds. So I think it was 41 out of 74, now it's 40. So big names CrowdStrike with a 70%, Bitdefender, Cyber Reason, Silence. 
I mean, fairly good detection. Microsoft, even. I mean, come on. Let's just say, what about McAfee? Is that even still a thing, or is that now underneath the... Uh... Trilix with FireEye, because wasn't it FireEye and McAfee put together? Oh, McAfee Scanner? I don't know. Maybe I'm misremembering. I could have swore that they were all put together with that, but... Sentinel-1, really? Undetected. Huh. Really? Kaspersky? Hmm. wonder if it's... Because it's Russian. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm just taking a... Just a wild swing. But, yeah. So I'll grab this and put that in there. Do we end up seeing... Nope, I don't need to contact the domains. I was going to say as to whether or not it would actually show, like, the reaching out to the... Uh, that raw.github user content URL to pull down the readme.md, but... Oh, well. Okay, so I'll grab all this stuff and put it in the description as normal. And I'll get this thing to go out and get it scheduled for Saturday at 5 p.m., my local time, as normal. And we'll go from there. So, this has been a, uh... Oh, Wild Fish. Back in 2023, I discovered a new malware called Astasia Loader, which is used to access the readme file text file and then download a payload like Redline Stealer, which is exactly what Malpedia lined out and the readme.md from the GitHub site, which makes sense. So, okay, I'll get all this put together, get it popped out and scheduled, and hopefully you've learned something. I mean, realistically, it comes down to just, yes, that you should take your or your samples and dump it in like detect it easy and if it's a .NET open it up in IL spy or DNS or DN spy and basically spend the time just looking through the stuff so with all that being said this has been the Astasia loader a medium challenge or medium difficulty challenge on the let's defend platform that requires a VIP and above subscription. So, hopefully you got something out of this. How about the scoreboard? Did I make it? Nope. Missed it by one day. Hmm. Oh well. <laughs> no fuss, no fuss. Alright, with all that being said, I will see everybody in the next video.